When five different talented tech tubers asked me to be the judge for their $250 used gaming PC challenge, I was more than happy to oblige. And today I'm going to be giving you guys the verdict. Welcome to Tech City, this is Brian coming to you guys today with the final scoring on the $250 used gaming PC challenge. Now the five tech tubers that I'm going to be judging today are Nerd on a Budget, Tech by Matt, Scatter Vault, Toasty Bros, and Aussie Talks Hardware. Now all the links to their videos and also their channels will be in the description below, so be sure to check them out. But with all that out of the way, the rules were very simple. Every builder had a budget of $250 or less to build the best price performance gaming PC possible. And every dollar over that $250 would count as $2. And based on my metric system, which I developed, and I'll explain that in a second, I had to judge the winner. And the following system is as follows. First up is Fire Strike, which I gave a heavy weighting of 30% to, since I've found in the past that this benchmark score is highly correlated to how a gaming PC will perform in the real world with games. Second, we have Unigine Heaven, which is another gaming benchmark, and I gave this a 20% weighting. Third is GTA 5, which I gave a 20% weighting to as well. Fourth, we have Shadows of Mordor, which scored 20% in the weighting too. And then in fifth place, we have the Cinebench R15 benchmark, which I decided to give a 10% weighting to and only take out the CPU score. I decided not to take into account the OpenGL test, however, since I've found in the past that that is heavily manipulated by things like Level 3 Cache, which have no bearing to real-world gaming benchmarks, or at least gaming performance. Now, with all the explanations out of the way, let's take a look at the winner of the contest, Nerd on the Budget with a $130 PC. He came in with 42.64 points here, and really there wasn't a lot to critique about this build. Everything was on point. He got those deals, he got that all-in-one system there which had the motherboard, the CPU, the fan, the hard drive even, and he even got some bonus RAM included, all for $50. This is what really made this PC win this competition in my opinion. Also that GTX 660, very good balance there as we could see in the GTA 5 benchmarks, scoring 90.27 frames per second on average versus the other competitors who had some much more powerful graphics cards, though they were being limited by the CPU on that benchmark and that in ways kind of heavily skewed the results towards nerd on the budget and since this is a contest with their own settings it is in the confines to have a good balance here and nerd on a budget certainly struck a great balance between cpu and gpu here though if there was one thing to critique i would say to take out that four gigabytes of ram and just have the eight gigabytes there in the set because i believe that would help your benchmarks even that much more or just by a little bit Coming in second place was Scattervault with the $245 GTX 970 Beast. He scored 39.15 points, so just a little bit shy of coming in a victory over Nerd on the Budget. However, I believe the big letdown here was the GTA 5 benchmark, and I will say that that's when that i5-2400 just couldn't live up to the GTX 970, demanding more power to be fed, and the CPU just couldn't provide that. However, the Fire Strike score there, unbelievable on this budget. You could also see with that graphics score that he was heavily overclocking that graphics card which is fantastic on this kind of budget though I will also say the four gigabytes of RAM I mean this is a competition and he is playing by the rules very smart choice but honestly for real world gaming applications I would have liked to have seen eight gigabytes of RAM in there to make a perfect gaming PC though very well done Scattervault love what you did with this build Coming in third place were the Tasty Bros with their $190 PC. They scored 34.93 points here, and they had a HD 7950, which they got for $90. And if there's anything to critique here, I would have liked to have seen them heavily overclock that 7950. I'm not too sure what they managed to get the overclocks to. I couldn't really see much information on that, though I'm sure that would have made them score a lot better in this competition. However, that aside, I think they had a solid PC in general. I couldn't really critique one thing as being a bad deal. I just think that Nerd on a Budget and also Scattervault got some better deals there and that enabled them to pull over a higher score than Toasty Bros. Coming in fourth place is Tech by Matt with his $250 PC. He scored 33.01 points here and he had a GTX 1060 which he picked up for around about $170. And this is the first thing I'm going to critique here since all these other deals were pretty rock solid. I think the GPU let him down, especially when we compare that to Scattervault's GTX 970 which was scoring a higher graphics score in Firestrike and he overclocked that 
And then we've got the $170 Gravis card, which came in at around 12,000 points versus the 13,200. So if there's anything that let Matt down, it was going with that gamble on that new Gravis card, which has less CUDA cores than the six gigabyte variant too on the GTX 1060. So that was kind of like the fallacy in this build. Though with that being said, I think it was a very solid contender and I really like what he did with the case and how he modded it to fit in all the parts on a budget. And then coming in fifth place is Aussie Talks Hardware with his $230 PC. He managed to score 20.82 points here on the scoring system. And it was a very bold move going with GTX 470s in SLI. But that's the first thing I will critique about this build. Going with legacy dated graphics cards in SLI probably wasn't a good idea and especially showed on the benchmarks coming in well below the other competitors there. Though I will give credit to Aussie Talks Hardware for being the only competitor to go with a manual type build. He managed to source a Xeon separately, a motherboard separately, and a CPU cooler, and also the RAM, and make something that was overclockable. And I love my Xeons. 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 Though with Aussie spending $20 on the CPU cooler and also $30 on the hard drives, I believe that this was money not well spent. I believe he could have put more of that money into the graphics card and gone with something like a 250 gigabyte used hard drive and also gone with one of those big fat stock Intel heatsinks from back in the day, which actually surprisingly do a very good job of overclocking and you can get between around 3.8 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz depending on the ambient temperatures with that CPU. So anyway guys, I had an absolute blast watching all these videos and also collabing with the five different YouTubers who I'll again put the links in the description below for their channels and their videos. I think it's absolutely awesome that the tech community is thriving, especially in the used parts scene where everyone, especially like myself, likes to get in there for the thrill of the hunt. And you can also help people out in the process and also save a lot of people money if you want to sell them that computer and save them from buying something like an Alienware. Anyway, that's it from me. I'm going to go get on my Wolfmobile and get on out of here. So if you like this video, then please give it a big thumbs up. And I will catch you guys in another tech video very soon, which is going to be my own used build. And it's going to be awesome. So stay tuned for that. And also, I'm looking for hot used setups. That's going to be a new series that I'm going to be bringing to the channel. Then the email's in the link below. So submit all the pictures you can to my email, brian at techcity.tv. And we're going to have an awesome new series coming for you guys. So stay tuned and peace out for now. Bye.